the weekend this is what i did i ended up going to fold as per usual where else am i gonna be um i went there on the friday and i had an absolute was it the friday i had an absolute blast i think it was friday was it friday or am i bugging out i think it was friday do i think it's friday or was it actually friday yes it was friday okay i went to fold on the friday that was actually a good night and i went to see i went for specifically transmissions right transmissions are a um collective of so this weekend what i get up to i went raving of course what else was i going to do this weekend what else am i going to do and of course i hit my favorite club in the world or not in the world it's definitely gonna be Bergheim, my favorite club in the uk fold and i went to a night called transmissions now they've put on some pretty decent nights over the what last few years that I've been kind of going out and whatnot, and I have to kind of definitely give them a definitely a shout out because you know I've said before like I've done the whole promoter hustle, I've done the whole promoter passion project, I've done them all, and I know how difficult it is to put on nights from just hosting a night that you just put on on the club that's kind of plug and play. You don't have to bring your own equipment or anything. To actually renting your own equipment, um, you know, to doing stuff outside, whatever it may be. Right, I've done it. I've done them all. Right, and I can say for sure, it's definitely one of the hardest jobs out there to get right because it's such a brutal job as well. Because the margins are really thin, and you know, mistakes are plenty, and it's a really unpredictable market. Blah blah blah. You know everything people talk about, but there are also people out there who do it really well and the ones that do it really well deserve some praise especially because i feel like the ones that do it really well they kind of i won't say legitimize clubs but they give people a reason to go to those clubs because of that one special night they created and if the club is smart they'll usually hold on to that um promotional uh that promo company right and basically all the club promotion company and basically have them do programming for you know a particular number of nights in the year maybe have them do residencies, whatever it may be. They'll usually do that sort of thing. Or like sometimes in London, they'll just have them roaming around different venues. Maybe the venues are nicked, so are, are linked behind, you know, holding companies, but, you know, it changes. But still, transmissions have definitely need to get some um, shine, I feel like, for their amount of nights that they put on. And also looking at their RA here, of the just the range of their events is something that needs to be given a lot of kind of um, heads up and a lot of kind of nodding on the head just those two nights there back to back the past ones right transmissions devious one and renee wise is one i went to and then you also you got here brika back to back with bakey all night long right so they've covered from the biggest hype of the hype to just people that are maybe some for their heads you've got another night here called dr banana presents dj perception truly madly adam pint and Alfia. Um, you got another one here with uh, Andrew James Gustav, Sugar Free and KRN. You got another one here with um, uh, the two residents from um, what's that place called? Salon de Lama Chairs, which is um, Willikins and Ivokovic all night long. Lena Willikins and Vladimir Ivakovic. Ev no Ivkovic, sorry, Ivkovic. You got Peach all night. You know, like really interesting. Like, Peach all night at venue MOT. Imagine how good that must have been as a party right to see peach play in such a small tight sweaty club in south london like crazy good right you got another one here this was postponed but that was a crazy lineup imagine that madam x back to back with scratch a dva <laughs> are you insane that is absolutely crazy crazy programming like really really good like lineup selection whatever that word is called that that people do this kind of job right another one yeah another kind of one that i'm not too familiar with the artist here peter van hossen marco shuttle and jay duncan you got another one here with julian huxtable who i saw at flipping Bergheim recently wings uh wax wings and my lee is it hey or my l sorry um another one that's really one for the heads ghost which is a uh what like a roving record store out of berlin again you know they had a lot of uh, people attending members that kind of said they were interested in going but the ghost is still i think a bit niche it's definitely something for the heads if you don't really know about them too tough it's hard to kind of decide to get your ticket and go to that sort of event but they went they flooded it they did a good job. if i'm not mistaken i tried to go if i'm not mistaken this but all the tickets were sold out and i wouldn't didn't want to risk going to the door and being turned away even though i'm sure i would have been able to get in um but still um loads of stuff right loads of stuff even this one 
E1 and transmissions. Hell in a Half, VTSS, DMX Crew, and Mama Snake. Like, Mama Snake is absolutely lethal. She's really good. So, anyway, they do really, really good parties. And obviously, I went to this party here, which was a devious one with. Um, with Renee Wise start to finish and first off Devious 1 I'm kind of spoiled because I've seen him twice now back to back once at E1 um, and then of course Renee Wise I saw him briefly in Berlin but I still wanted to get the kind of semi full experience of them two playing together and I thought it was a pretty sick and clever idea that they had them basically do what four hours each or something whatever it may have been I think it might have been less actually is it less I think it's four hours each I'm not too sure I think so anyway regardless they did a long time and they split the time equally and i think it was pretty sick to see all right them do that and i'm always gonna support these sort of lineups at a place like fold because even if you're gonna get all the hype kids coming out all the people that just jumping on the bandwagon you're still gonna get the core sort of fold contingent there making it what it is in the same way the cause did right when the cause was around even though some of the lineups were a bit bait or maybe some of the lineups were a bit maybe you know maybe one that our general panels won't like people general panels still went there but the what made the cause such a good vibe was the you know the core audience of people that go there week in week out or that go there every other month whatever every other day da, 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 da. and i think the same thing happens at fold so immediately the vibe in there like just let's just say the vibe inside there was probably one of the best i think people have mentioned it already i've seen some comments people saying how sick it was and let me be honest i've been to fold a lot of times i've been to fold sometimes when it hasn't been great and all the t and most of the time i think i've mentioned this on this channel you know um clubs unfortunately especially if you're running a club which must be the hardest job in the world even though i eventually want to open my own nightclub that's definitely something that i've got on my uh bucket list of um, things i want to achieve hopefully in the next few years or whatnot but for sure having a club is a thankless job because there is no way you can really 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 purposely sort of cultivate your own community it kind of has to not happen by chance but you kind of have to hope they choose you like okay cool we think you guys are legit we think you guys are doing this proper we're going to stand behind you and if you don't have a good community around you there's nothing else you can do really it doesn't matter what your lineups are saying if the community that goes to that club isn't it it's not it like you know think about places like x or y or even though I have, I have a lot of good memories of times i went there a lot of reason why people hate it is because in general the people that go there on a the daily are the people that live and work around you know that area of flipping x or y and people generally that kind of are part of the scene that i'm in just don't vibe with that kind of group of people and maybe vice versa so it doesn't necessarily work out but fold group you know always i think bring the noise they bring the vibe they dance their fucking faces off and of course like i say many times the flipping closing of your camera or the you know you are being aware that you have a stick on your camera it just makes people lose them inhibitions just be a little bit more comfortable to just fuck around man honestly it's such a good time in there because people just don't care no one's recording you no no one's doing anything anyone's just trying to sweat their faces off and just don't dance and shake their arms in the air and i absolutely loved it and i have to say the really surprising thing that i thought transmission did well which i don't i don't know if it was a thing because devious one had a other skit another trip you had to go which i don't think that's true because maybe it's true maybe they have another trip because if he finishes at three then he can maybe get to an airport before the first flight that leaves at like six but anyway so to spoil the lead devious one played early which is not really something you would imagine because obviously he's a you know maybe a far more well-known or established artist than renee wise and you'd imagine in their careers you know devious one would probably be the headliner which means he would maybe end the night but in this rave um devious one actually opened and then renee wise was the one that was closing um which i think actually gave the night a good vibe because devious one set that set that room up really well for the renee wise to just come in and knock them knock those pins down so that was pretty sick but coming in and just hearing devious one playing you know doo -doo -doo, the, the, gloop, gloop, the kind of like you know those kind of bloopity bloop noise that you kind of associate with a really banging um free deck mix worthy of uh devious one was sick to hear and see and just that space man to hear devious one how kind of 
box office is the i don't know what they do with the audio in there and the sound engineering i'm not a sound engineer i have nothing about that the lighting in there everything is fucking sick they have a dedicated person doing all the flipping lights and whatnot and it's just especially when you're off the flipping pingers it really does send you on another the planet mate it gets you going so good in there that's why some of the times i'm in there or most of the time i'm in there i've hardly drank like the, even this one i didn't really drink i had a couple of drinks on the way there but i didn't buy any drinks there i just was on the water or no alcoholic drinks you know, i was just on the water the whole entire time because just the vibe the sweatiness of the place everyone on top of you it just really kind of adds to the night and the djs were absolutely smashing it and again devious one was absolutely phenomenal and obviously renee wise when he came on too was really really good but i think the interesting part about it is i think they complement each other really well but they were very it was very clear to hear who was who when it, when someone was playing you could feel it and of course you know it kind of helped when devious one finished we all kind of did a round of applause and stuff and everyone was screaming and shouting he got a really good reception from the crowd and just in general i think he felt the vibe that everyone was done because it must be cool and a pleasure that they come to a club like in london especially in the uk having been all over the world and maybe having been in front of a crowd where someone's just like sticking a phone in your face right and you just got the light there it's quite nice to go i must it must be for a dj coming to london to go and look at the crowd and just see people dancing it doesn't matter if this so the audience is small big or whatever just see people losing their heads and the thing that about fold is really cool if i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken again maybe i'm wrong here but i think if i'm not mistaken the stage at fold is a little bit higher than the actual dance floor not that much but a little bit so i'm imagining if you're behind the decks which i haven't been yet but soon that will happen in my in my future for sure when you're behind the decks i'm pretty sure you can see all the way to the back so they have a view of everyone and the thing that's sick about fold when you go in there you usually see people who don't want to get hot and sweaty or, or get bothered or touched or you know whatever moved around they'll be standing at towards the back next to where the vj is and the vj no less all the light where the lighting guy is because um, that's usually where the coolest bit of the club is because that's where all the air conditioning fans sit and whatnot so i wonder if you're a dj and you're behind the decks at fold if you could just look and see people at the back dancing you could just see them going crazy and that must fill you with so much glee so much kind of enthusiasm yeah it's all right to have the the super fan in front of you dancing and going crazy but you get those everywhere right that kind of first couple of rows of people just go straight to the front and don't move that's sick but i think the back where people are just going crazy, like just, you know, not even looking at you, just kind of staring at the wall, staring, at, that must be such a good feeling, man. And you saw it throughout the entire set, especially at DVS, well, DVS one set, because he came a bit earlier. And of course, you know, standard nightclub, standard London nightclub thing, they never published set times prior. So I only found out about the set times from the flipping um, WhatsApp group that I'm a part of in terms of, you know, uh, techno nights out here in London, which is a really good resource, to be honest, on there. And, um, that's the only way I found out the actual set times. Because before that, you know, I'd have to go there and kind of get surprised. And then Renee Wise came on and absolutely tear it up as well. Renee Wise too, big up him. He was actually on the dance floor several times while Devious One was playing. Adding to the whole thing. People kind of patting him on the back and saying how much they liked him. Whatever, maybe he's just having a good time. Just frolicking around and being, you know, young and successful and just popping as, as he is. Like, props to him. But that was such a cool little move. I don't sure what move, but that's cool, just cool to see. I mean, a prominent DJ just actually on the dance floor. Um, I know a lot of people on interviews say, oh yeah, I'm an actual raver at heart. That's how I got into music. No, you didn't. Let's not lie. I mean, you're a producer first, then you went to a DJ because, you know, why not? In it? Why not make an extra bit, of, extra bit of money if people love your tunes? It makes complete sense. But there's not a lot of actual people that look like they enjoy going to like, which makes sense though. I think if you're a DJ, you know, for many many years i think the novelty of club nights probably kind of dies away really really quickly once you kind of do it day to day but still see renee wise and dance was absolutely amazing and i did happen to record a little video um of course no one of the no one there and no kind of visual shots of the dj is playing there's a couple of embarrassing clips in here of my face just staring directly into the camera as you can see here and you can clearly see me kind of melting and clearly you know off the fingers actually going to another planet but i was just happy to be in it do you know what i mean hearing that like hearing devious one that system thinking yes this is what i wanted to hear i wanted to just hear him like this and this atmosphere because as good as it is to see those people play in places like Berghain, this is home court right this is the same way why i want to see freddie k play at fold in this sort of lineups soon also right 
this is why you know seeing someone like a Dr. Rubenstein here would also be good as much as it's good to see them over there it's good to see them here at home court because you get to actually feel the vibe in a place that you kind of can call quote unquote home so this is a clip that I'm going to play because there's a few on here I'm going to skip around um, taken from the night and of course uh, you shall see my sweaty face but again as I said before they usually always cover the back of your camera this is just me for the selfie camera just looking at myself so obviously it's naughty because you meant to take any pictures or videos at all there but I didn't show anybody on there it's just me with my face I'm completely sweating so I'm going to pass it around a bit so make sure when you do go there that you respect the rules and don't video record anybody because I was just doing this like intimately here and there I wasn't necessarily doing this for uh, the entire night and also just to touch upon that before I play this the sound on this is absolutely garbage compared to what I remember it being inside the club I don't know why you guys that go to nightclubs just stand there and literally record whole sets of your phones. I don't know why you do it for. Maybe it's for the uh, tune IDs. Maybe it's for the clout online. I don't know. Maybe I'm the same with the thing I'm, I'm doing isn't necessarily that much different. I'm not really too sure. But there's something really R-worded about standing in a club and recording a video like that because it's never going to be the same as you heard in a club. Never. And no one else really cares about the video. I know I'm playing mine here, but no one really cares about my video my time going to a nightclub so recording it that whole time just doesn't make any sense to me because the quality is garbage i've kind of definitely you know i've had that sort of like whoa man phone cameras are not as good as your ears what you know that kind of moment but you know what i mean so let's play the clip now devious one renee why i fold hope you enjoy <laughs> That's a really embarrassing lad side of me. And that's also something that a lot of people, when I went to Berlin the first couple of times I wrecked, I realized that's something that the more sophisticated hipster, um, chin stroker um, type fan of techno music or of dance music in general isn't a fan of. They hate all this stuff, like the whistling, the, the kind of the terrace culture that's kind of coming into club nights or you know sometimes you go to like house nights um that you would maybe describe as tech house nights and you hear people like humming along to the tune that has no lyrics on it right or that has no lyrics on the tune like humming along to the bass line like just crazy shit like that right and usually a lot of those folk that are more trendy more hipster they hate this sort of stuff they completely hate you hate you hate you hate you so I don't know what it is about me when I'm having a good time. I tend to do this stuff all, you know, a lot. And um, yeah, it's just something that I do in it. What could you do?
anyway, you get the drift. Um, enough of that. So that was um, Devious One and Renee Wise at Fold this past weekend at Fold, my favorite nightclub here in the UK. And I do recommend you guys go check it out if you haven't already. And also, I want to big up everybody that I bumped into at Fold who said that they've watched the channel or watched my reviews of nights over there. So thank you for those of you who said hi. Um, really do appreciate you, especially one in particular who ended up helping me out with some techno dust. Big up you. <laughs> but yeah, big up everybody that I bumped into. It was really, really cool. Um, you know, it's, it's something that I don't usually expect because, you know, I just do this for myself. I don't really care for the adulations or the recognitions and stuff that's not something i'm in this for at all in the slightest i'm super passionate about this music i'm super passionate about this scene i clearly want to get involved in my own way in terms of opening my club in the future but obviously being a dj myself and just kind of enjoying it as a consumer i've always been that kind of person jeremy you know I, mean? I don't need to be super duper involved or behind the scenes to enjoy it i just love enjoying it as a punter and being super passionate about it and clearly um with some of you guys it does connect with some of you guys it doesn't which is understandable too some of you guys hate this sort of stuff but hey it's my podcast and i do what the so yeah big up everybody that said hi and that you know was just nice and whatnot and you know said some nice words um we exchanged some hugs very very sweaty hugs myself included i'm sorry um but it is what it is it is oh yeah make sure if you go there by the way wear a short sleeve t-shirt right please don't go there with a long sleeve t-shirt you will die I guarantee you, make sure you buy a short sleeve t-shirt. Even in the winter months, it doesn't matter. Buy a short sleeve t-shirt because that place gets hot and sweaty. But as I said prior, the hot and sweatiness of that place actually adds to it. It actually makes the night fun or funner. Do you know what I mean? It makes it more enjoyable. And the fact that you have to cover your phone, um, back camera, not have your thing, it just makes it, you don't, you can't pull it out and immediately record videos. No one gives a fuck anymore because it's going to be terrible because that place, you need to, you know, embrace it, flipping in there you need to basically be in there right you need to feel the sweat you need to feel the warmth of people on top of you passing through dancing you need to feel the noise like everything about it it's it's, it's really impressive to be fair what they've done over there in a short space of time so big up everybody there so shit with the place you know they keep that place ticking and running and as it's basically it feels like it's running on autopilot i just saw a post there again on a monday it feels like mondays they kind of have these you know it's another busy week here at Fold. I mean, it's churning them out. The unfolds, which they do on Sunday with all the residents and stuff and friends and family connected with the club, which I hopefully maybe in the future would have an opportunity to play at one day, um, was... Um, they're now doing those more regularly it feels like so clearly there's a demand for that on Sundays because before it felt like it was just a thing that they put on because they had a free day in a week so why not you know so kind of it's a free hit because you're going to be you know you're paying for the rent anyway it doesn't matter in it you're paying for the lease whatever maybe so you might as well just put on something when you're not really open um and it's doing pretty well for the most part i can tell with the small community of people that have been going there since day dot um i haven't been i've never been to one unfold actually actually which is quite surprising i've been to the first ever fold party though which i'm really happy about because i can definitely see the growth of what they've been able to do but i've not been to one unfold but i've heard it's absolutely banging so all that is obviously a good sign that they're kind of in autopilot now and just smashing out quality night after quality night and of course it helps that they have great partners too so you know so big up the promoters and transmissions for putting that together and just generally putting together quality nights i think if i'm not mistaken they also put together the night that i went to with um rubenstein dr rubenstein and what's his name i forgot his name that she plays with sometimes the dude with the beard really handsome good looking guy from i think he might be iranian or from tel aviv or something i forgot his name um anyway um good night great night enjoyed it had a blast um only thing i'd say is a negative for me personally was that this time because i wanted to wear some fashionable clothes let's say i decided not to go on my bike and i didn't really want to you know sweat or anything too much prior to going there so i took my ass there on um public transport and fine going there but on the way back the buses take longer the trains take longer so it's just it was a bit, bit of a nightmare um to get back home but you know whatever innit? that's just something i have to kind of deal with but yeah big up everybody that's associated with that place and that you man are doing some great work <laughs> 